<laughs> right. Come back and it's in the jacuzzi tub, like, hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> holding a glass of champagne. Yes. Like, could you give me a repool? Like, give me a top up, please. <laughs> yeah. Down here, if there was a scorpion to do that, it lives it would, in Key it West. It lives in Key West, definitely. <laughs> Hello, 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 and welcome to Well Shit. It really is that simple. I'm Claire. And I'm Serena. On this podcast, we help you to understand about your 12 universal needs, why they are currently not being well met, how to meet them in ways that work for you, and how to consistently do so in quick, easy, and simple ways that fit seamlessly into your life. We'll also help you to understand how doing so will have a positive ripple effect in literally every area of your life. If you like what you hear, please support us on Patreon and enjoy the show. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, everyone. Today, we're going to jump into our business series. Mm -hmm. And today, we're going to talk about customer service, good customer service, and how to give it. Um, And I'm just going to jump in here, though. I can hear some people like listening to this and going, oh, yeah, this isn't relevant to me. I don't have my own business. I don't work in customer-facing roles. I don't work in customer service. Skip, let's find another one. I'm going to invite you to just pause and maybe have a bit of a listen to this one because there's some stuff in here that will be helpful almost no matter who you are, what situation you're in. Um, I would suggest hanging around and listening for a little bit because there's some helpful information here for everyone. Absolutely, because as Claire said, if you have your own business, if you're in business, if you're in um, customer-facing service. Positions. Positions, Mm -hmm. yes, this is going to apply to you. But it also applies to any job you do, because customers can be traditional customers. They can also be your managers or your direct reports. Mm -hmm. They can be suppliers or other colleagues. The same principles often apply. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the first thing is to get into what is customer service. It's a helpful place to start if you're looking to give it. (laughs) (laughs) Knowing what it is. Right? (laughs) The more you know. That's actually, that's probably a a reference to um, uh, something on this side of the pond. Yeah, I'm like, Um, There (laughs) there were like, info, not infomercials, like little PSAs, I guess, uh, growing up in... um, I want to say the 80s and 90s. I think they stopped in early 2000s, but it was like a PSA would pop up on the TV and then it would say like the more you know and there was the star. So there's a <laughs> there's a certain generation of people who are going to get that joke and the rest of you. Um, I didn't get that joke. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's right. Thank you for the explanation. It's yeah. always helpful to have context. <laughs> look it up and it will make a little and it was just like a, oh, oh well, look okay. it, I learned something. It was kind of like saying fun fact. Right. <laughs> um, so customer service is simply taking care of the needs of your customers right and in order to do that you need to understand a couple of things the first thing is what their needs actually are if you don't know what their needs are you're not going to know what you need to do to meet them well you're going to definitely be less less efficient at it like it's much harder to meet somebody's needs if you don't know what they what those needs are and it's definitely hard to do it effectively and efficiently (laughs) yeah you can't really spaghetti factor the needs like just throw some throw spaghetti on the wall see what sticks it's remarkable how many companies do do that (laughs) like it's not an effective way of doing things it's not an efficient way of doing things but it's It's, a popular way yeah but not a good way let's 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 see if we can shift that and change that with with this podcast (laughs) right so first find out what their needs are Mm -hmm. and then you need to you need to identify what needs are actually your responsibility to meet in the context of the business customer relationship. Can I just pause a second? You said you need to find out what their needs are. And I'm just going to jump in and say the needs are the same, no matter what the context of the situation. You need to understand what those needs are, but you don't have to go looking for something different in the customer service context as you would in um, the same context as you learning to meet your own needs. So um, it's not like you've got to discover something new. If you know what your needs are, you can use that knowledge and apply it in a customer service context. You just need to understand what those needs are in order to be able to meet them well. So I just just had to jump in with that. Yeah, no, that's a great correction Mm -hmm. because Claire is absolutely right. It's, you're not, you know what your business is, you know what the services you provide, you know what 
you're offering if you're in a volunteer position or something like mm-hmm. that. So you know what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and more importantly, if you know if you know that, that's like one side of the information. I know my business, I know my service, I know my product, I know what I'm doing. If you know what the customer's needs are, you know how to provide that in a way that meets the customer's needs. And that's why it's the first and most important thing to understand when giving good customer service. Like if I know what those needs are, I know how to make sure that what I'm doing is actually ticking the boxes as far as those needs. And then the second thing, I think you've already said it, but you want to go over it again because we kind of look, looped back a little bit. Yes. Um, so the second thing is what needs are actually your responsibility in the context of the business customer relationship? Yeah. And then the third thing that you want is to find out or is to identify what needs are not your responsibility, but that you could still choose to meet to go above and beyond in terms of the experience that they'll have for you. Right. Or have with you. Or have, yes, have yeah. with you. Um, so when you're dealing with a customer service incident that has compromised a customer's needs, it's really important to identify which needs have been negatively impacted. Because mm-hmm. those are the needs that you really need to focus on. Absolutely. You're going to want to do what you can to address those specific needs mm-hmm. in how you approach addressing the situation and making amends. So you want to take the needs that have been impacted and make those the priority and the focus yes. of that amends process that applies apology process. Um, Because if you're trying to meet needs that weren't met, I mean, that's great. We always want, you know, to do more and go above and beyond, but we're not looking to go above and beyond until we've we've identified and rectified the problem that was created. Absolutely. And if you want to, I mean, if you want to get even more insight on this, I recommend going back and listening to our apology series, especially episode 17, which is how to apologize, where we go through what the steps of an apology are. I'm here to tell you, this applies in a business context just as much as it does in a person. We kind of focused on the personal in that, in that um, episode and in that series, but you can utilize that when you have had a customer service incident that has impacted the customer's needs, you can go through those same steps to help you get to the point where you rebuild the customer relationship and build trust with that customer again. So there are five different levels of customer service. Um, We're going to go through the five. We're going to go actually from the worst to the best, and you'll kind of understand why while we're doing it, when I'm doing it. The first level of customer service is damaging customer service. So this is customer service, which is severely or repeatedly compromising or negatively impacting your customer's needs. So in this situation, you're not just not meeting the needs, you're actually negatively impacting them in the context of the relationship or the uh, the, the, um, interaction between the two. The second level is bad customer service. And I love that bad customer service isn't the ba- isn't as bad as it can get. Like there's something below that on the uh, on the scale. But it's true. Like bad customer service is the next level up because this is failing to do the minimum to meet your customer's needs in the context of the transaction between the two of you. Because there are so- certain needs that are uh, reasonable for people to expect to be met within a context of, a, of the transaction. There are other needs that aren't. But failing to do the, the, bin- the bare minimum in order to meet those needs in that context that's bad customer service so the next level is kind of the neutral zone where this is basic customer service this is where you are doing the minimum to meet your customer needs so that um so the minimum like the bare minimum in the context of the transaction between you it's like here are the things i'm meant to be doing in the context of the transaction transaction I'm doing the bare minimum to hit that level. That's what basic customer service is. This is the absolute minimum that any company should be aiming for, is to be doing basic customer service. The next level up is good customer service. So this is meeting your customer, um, the customer's needs well within the context of the transaction between you. So this is about looking at what are the needs we're meant to be meeting and we're doing a good job of that. We're doing that well. We're not just doing it at the bare minimum. We're doing well at that. And then the final step is extraordinary customer service. So this is where we're meeting the customer's needs way beyond expectations. So the ones that we are expected to meet, we're meeting those above and beyond their expectations or we're actually meeting needs that weren't um, part of the initial transaction between the two of you. So one is we're looking at the needs that we are supposed to be meeting and we're doing that above and beyond. And the um, second is we're looking at um, needs that were never expected to be part of that transaction and we're meeting those and meeting them well as well. So those are the five levels of customer service. But in addition to this, it's important to be aware that there are three key elements of creating a good customer experience. The first is you want to understand what the customer's needs are in the context of that business relationship and put in place a strategy to be consistently meeting those needs above expectations. This is one of the foundational elements of creating extraordinary customer 
customer service, um, and they're the building block of any customer experience strategy. The second level, um, we're looking at, again, things we were talking about in that fifth level, that extraordinary customer service, is understanding which needs are not part of the expectations of the business relationship, but things that you can still do to create that above and beyond experience. So, so often, there are some really quick and easy wins in this area that don't take a lot of time, don't take a lot of energy, don't take a lot of effort, but they really impact the customer experience because they're not expected. And the fact that they're not expected is what what takes, they make these things so powerful to do and a really valuable element in creating an extraordinary customer service. And then the third thing, the, the third kind of key element to creating a, an amazing customer experience is to have a strategy to turn mistakes and incidents and challenges into customer experience opportunities. So we we talked about in, I think it was episode 15, about how screw-ups can build, bring our relationships closer. We were focusing probably more on uh, personal relationships and business relationships uh, in that episode, but it's exactly the same with business um, uh, business relationships and the instance that happened there. If there is an instant that has impacted somebody's need, that is an opportunity to bring that relationship closer together. It is an opportunity to um, build more trust, to build more connection, to build more bond. And how do we do that? One of the ways we do that is by learning how to make an effective apology. Again, go back and look at the apology uh, series, uh, episodes 16, 17, and 18. 17 is the one which gives you the step-by-step on how to make an effective apology because it's through doing that that you're going to take those incidents and experiences and turn them into those great opportunities. So as always, we want to give um, some examples. We have so many examples. I think we're going to have to try and to, to shorten our, our, our examples because there were mm-hmm. so many that we, I mean, when we were going through, I'm like, oh, well, it was that situation. Do you remember that situation? Oh, yeah, that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, because this, unfortunately, basic customer service isn't very common. I'm going to say that again. Basic customer service isn't very common. Quite often, we have bad customer service. And I'm going to say extraordinary customer service is incredibly rare. That very, very rarely happens, which means that if you're putting time and energy into creating that, it's a way of setting yourself apart from other businesses, um, from your competitors. It really is something to focus on. Um, But I know that you have some really interesting examples of... um, not very well done customer experiences. Yes, I had to choose from um, quite the list. Uh, I've been (laughs) in hospitality for about 20 years now, and I've seen a lot. I've experienced a lot myself. Mm -hmm. And I was telling my husband about this episode, and he goes to the scorpion. And I was like, yes, (laughs) the scorpion. (laughs) He knew exactly. Like, And this obviously shows like customer service because I've been in the hospitality industry is something that I focus on. Like when something's your job, you go into other places and you're, you know, it's like, oh. You know how it's meant to be. Yes. You you know what you're looking for. You know how easy it can be sometimes. Mm-hmm. And when people aren't making even the bare minimum effort, it's like. Oh, come on. (laughs) Or maybe they just haven't had the training. It may be that they're not making the effort. They literally do not know how to. I think the thing is when you've, we've both been in the hospitality industry um, for significant periods of our lives and we've been trained on this. And especially now we understand the the needs thing. I mean, it's slightly different because we've got a better understanding of the needs on all sides of the equation, Mm -hmm. not just on the customer side. Um, But I think that when you've, when you've been in that experience and you've had to deliver good customer service for a long time and you've been trained in doing that, it's easy to assume that everybody knows how to do it and everyone knows what it should look like and everybody's fact, been given the tools to be able to do it absolutely and there's a lot of people it mean especially when you're when you're in um high um high volume tourist areas with high staff turnover mm-hmm. quite often they're not getting the training they need to be able to do this effectively and it's not their fault and their mistake necessarily it could just be a fault in the the company and in the management and in the leadership that they're not getting this they're not getting the support they need to do to provide good customers Uh, service and experience and i'm about to drop a bomb i I know this is going to be shocking we're all human (gasps) really right i feel like we have to make it big big and dramatic because that is one of those things that's really hard to like really identify with and embody is like Mm -hmm. no i am human and everybody else is human so i have a server that is giving horrible service not acceptable but before where i might have been like now i'm like (laughs) Okay, I've had a day too and I've barely had the capacity to make it through the day and I'm mm-hmm. trying because I need the paycheck or I have to do the you know right. all of the things 
And knowing my needs, knowing needs in general, has made it much easier for me to identify and empathize in these situations. Right. It doesn't change that customer service should be at minimum at a basic level. Right. However, the knowledge of needs has given me a lot of... And that we're all human, including the people who are providing customer experience and customer service. Right. And and, and I'm going to say that the jump in with the, the Scorpion incident, it was before you had that awareness, yes. right? It was necessary. That wasn't necessarily part of your thought process at the time. Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. Like the fact that I kept my shit together as much as I did during this experience, um... That was just it's a pure miracle. unusual. It was a miracle <laughs> yeah. at that point in my my journey. So, so tell tell them about the scorpion because yes. this. I mean, I'm like every every time you tell the story, I'm like, oh god, I feel like kind of itchy just thinking about <laughs> it. Um, so just to kind of frame the story, my husband and I honeymooned in Key West before we moved down here. Long before we moved down here, and so we came down. We're doing all the touristy things, mm-hmm. and you know, just. Going out, enjoying the wild marker zero and the southernmost buoy and all the all the things. I gotta have a cheeseburger in paradise. Yes, what? Oh, man. Um, things that I can't even comprehend doing these days. <laughs> However, back to the story. So we were excited. Um, I think this was actually Joe's first trip to the island. Okay, um, I had been here before, but. You know, anytime I came here, this was my vacation spot. So I was super charged, super excited. And, and wanted to do all the tourist stuff. I wanted, well, and oddly enough, this was one of the places I was never looking for perfection in my vacation because of how the island is and because I've had experienced it. So there was. It's very a, real, this island. It is. Yeah. And it's hard to kind of, you, well, it's not hard to. You miss a lot if you keep yourself in a perfection. <laughs> yeah, you miss it's, a lot when you do that, apparently. Do. Right. <laughs> when you put yourself kind of into a, it has to look this way bubble because it never looks the way you think it's going to on the island. Mm-hmm. But if you let it happen, it will be more magical. Right. So I had already come into that and I'm like, okay, things happen. It's different. It's weird. There's experience here. Mm-hmm. It's different. So one day we came back and we were changing before we went to dinner and I went to go grab my shoes and out of my shoes falls a scorpion. What looks like a dead scorpion, but a scorpion. So I had never really seen one like in person in my space before right. from New England. We don't have scorpions up there. So it was a new thing for me. Mm-hmm. And my initial thought was, oh, crap, what the hell is that? And, you yeah. know, but then we looked at it and we're like, oh, I think it's dead. And I'm like, let's just put a cup on it just in case because, mm-hmm. you know scorpion yeah so we did you know when that like kind of just kind of running around hanging around in your in your hotel room waiting to to, to surprise you again <laughs> right come back and it's in the jacuzzi tub like hey yeah. <laughs> holding a glass of champagne yes. like could you give me a repo like give me a top up please <laughs> yeah down here if there was a scorpion to do that it lives it would, in key it west. lives in key west definitely <laughs> So when we got back and saw that it was not only alive, but really pissed off that it had been in a cup for the last couple of hours. It doesn't like being in boxes too. No. Like, no not either. Yeah. No, nope, it was trying its hardest to get out. So we called the front desk and they sent somebody over who I'm not sure if they told them what they were coming to do. Deal with, yeah. Uh, he showed up with a piece of paper and he's like, oh, I hear you have something you need to be removed. I'm like, yeah, a scorpion under a cup. Walked into it and saw how angry said scorpion was and was like, oh, all right. Uh, he didn't want to go anywhere near it either. Do not blame him. And that wasn't mm-hmm. the issue. But he took his took the cup and started to wiggle a piece of paper under it. And so we're all just kind of like, OK, just get it out the door where it gets thrown in front of our room. But that's I mean, yeah, I'm just kind of thinking of that. I'm like, right. wait a minute. Yeah, no, we tossed it out the door. Uh, we took the welcome mat back to go and knew it wasn't coming back. Right. But the issue lied when I went to the front desk. And at this point, like I said, I've been in hospitality and customer service for a long time. I needed to be heard from somebody who wasn't Joe because Joe was part of the situation and it impacted his needs as well. Mm-hmm. And so I went to the front desk and I was like, this is what just happened. And the response was, well, it's Florida. Like, well, that's nice that it's Florida, but I'm from Massachusetts and I've never seen a scorpion before. Yeah. And I'm like, what if it had like stung me? And he's like, no, it wouldn't have hurt you. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to jump in here right now because firstly, yeah, it might not have been poisonous, but 
having known a couple of people who have had scorpion stings, I mean, my travels, I've taken me all over the world. I was in Costa Rica, I was in Brazil. Um, and, um, and I had friends who were traveling in South America. I know, uh, I know one person who was stung herself and I know another guy who, I think it was his wife that was stung and was talked through on the phone, like by a doctor, like the stages that it's going to go through. And I like, I think, I believe what one of them is like, she's going to think she's dying. Like that's like that. She said, he was like, be prepared for that. Like she's not, it's okay, but it's going to feel like she is. So a scorpion sting is a major thing. It's, I mean, it's going to hurt mm-hmm. at a very, very base level. I don't like getting stung in general. Like no. a bee sting, I'd be like, ow. Like, yeah. Again, not the, not the hotel. And this is the thing is that it was not about the fact, it wasn't the hotel's fault that it was in there. And it I knew that. <laughs> and, and it wasn't the manager who you were speaking to's fault that it was in there. You were just looking for some, some empathy, some acknowledgement of what had happened and how it was dealt with not only didn't provide that need, it actually undermined it. So not only did you not feel heard, you felt unheard. Mm-hmm. So that like further compromised the need that had already been compromised. Um, and it would have been such an easy and quick uh, thing to address. We are, I'm so sorry. I can only imagine like that must have been quite scary. Uh, obviously, we've had it dealt with. But if there is any other issues, you know where we are. Call us. We'll send somebody up straight away to deal with it. Um, is there anything more we can do for you? Like it's a very easy conversation to have somebody feel heard, to have them feel that the situation has been addressed, but also that you're not alone in it, and um, and that if this if said situation was to happen again, that you've that they're there and they're going to support you. And I think that's where the the trigger probably was for you and this is where the trigger is for a lot of people when in these kind of customer service situations where we're not not only have our needs been impacted by the situation they may have only been impacted slightly Mm -hmm. and a slight um rectification would have easily done the job but the problem is is that where the needs have been compromised further that actually creates more of a trigger within us and so we react to having our needs compromised further and then if that's not dealt with and I need to compromise further, we react to that. And so something that was a quick, easy, simple fix to begin with actually becomes this big kind of mountain to deal with, not because of the initial situation, but how the situation has been dealt with and how ineffectively it has supported the needs that have been compromised as it, as it goes through. And that from what you've shared with me about this experience is what happened, right? Yeah. And it's, there was a lack of any sort of apology, which was admitting that this was an like a not normal circumstance Mm -hmm. because him saying oh it's florida it's like oh well am i going to come back to like a party of scorpions in my room and i don't feel like i can call you because you obviously don't give a shit right now and that's what and as a guest as a paying guest i was like you don't give a shit do you Mm -hmm. and again like the apology being not that not that the apology not being oh it's my fault I, I, this, I should, I should have made it so this didn't happen Mm -hmm. or that it was the hotel's fault. I'm sorry that this has been your experience. This is not the experience we would want our guests to have. And we will have somebody go into the room and, and spray to try and ensure it doesn't happen again. Like, how do you avoid repeating in the future? Like, I mean, like thinking about these things, there were, there were a lot of things that could have been done in that situation. And as somebody who spent a lot of time in Florida, it's very easy to get complacent about things Mm -hmm. here that, Uh, everybody else would be like oh my god like because you don't experience it in day-to-day life and there are also ways of dealing with those things because it's part of Mm day-to-day life I mean a a bottle of I'm not going to say the brand because I'm sure there are lots of like this there are there are sprays that you can put into a, a space to help minimize scorpions and other creepy crawlies um from coming back so they're already in insects yes exactly (laughs) there's there's ways of there are things that could have been done to show an understanding and appreciation of the fact that this wasn't ideal and it wasn't what you they would have wanted the experience to be and we're going to try and do something to stop it from happening again um and if it does happen again we're going to be there for you and help you to deal with it because we don't want people to have to deal with scary scorpions on their trips to this place so it's like it's not um it's not that the this person needed to apologize because they i mean when we talk about an apology it's about obviously normally it's about owning your responsibility and what you did or didn't do 
it's also possible in this situation, you might not have been in a customer service um, context to be saying, okay, I didn't do this. It wasn't that I shouldn't have done this. This is not the expectation that you would have had from our business. And who knows, maybe they hadn't had the experience the exterminator people through on a regular basis. Maybe there were other reasons why that happened. Maybe it was just, it was Florida and this little guy decided he fancied hanging out in the jacuzzi. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows? Like, it's not about the fact that there was necessarily something that had been done wrong by this person, but you can still apologize and say, this is not the experience we want you to have with us. I'm addressing, again, I'm, I'm addressing the situation that happened initially. Initially, I'm making amends. I'm going to avoid it from happening again. And I'm going to see what else I can do in order to address, uh, in order to go above and beyond in terms of rebuilding that relationship. Because the relationship wasn't damaged by the fact that the scorpion was in the room. The customer relationship was dealt with because that person either didn't know or was having a bad day or what have you, didn't address what had happened in a way that, supported the needs that have been impacted or supported the needs that you were seeking to have met in that moment, which was like, I just want someone to get the fact that this was scary and it's my honeymoon and I don't want to deal with stuff like that. And I get, if you really don't want to deal with stuff like that, don't go to somewhere that has right. scorpions <laughs> in the area. And if you go to those areas that, um, that it would be a reasonable assumption if you're paying a, a certain level of hotel and you're paying a certain amount of money that the hotel would be happy to help deal with those situations. I mean, if you're doing a, um, you're, you're renting a little cabana somewhere where there's, it's not a hotel, there's no support. You kind of expect to deal with that stuff by yourself. If you're paying for a, whatever, like four star hotel or something, you would expect that those, that part of the service that they provide is helping you to deal with any issues if they come up. And that's basically what you were seeking in that moment. Yeah. I'm kind of paraphrasing, but no, that's actually a great paraphrase on it. And what happened was, is he didn't, um, the person didn't, not, bleh. the person not only didn't compromise or didn't meet the needs that I was seeking to get met by going to them, he then compromised them further yeah. by the response that he had in what could have easily been solved with just that hearing, that empathy, that acknowledgement and simple customer service techniques yeah. that are cost free, mm -hmm. it did end up costing the hotel something to meet the the or, needs that were then impacted because of how he was dealt with it. Yes. How he dealt with it. Like because that's the thing is that you're going to be more upset, you're going to feel less heard, you're going to be feel, like feel uh, less taken care of. And so it's going to require a little bit more to then feel taken care of. Because what ends up happening is that we start up here, our needs are okay. And then the customer service incident happens. And like, again, if you're watching the video, you can see what I'm doing. I apologize to those on the audio. I will try and describe it as well as I can. Um, but you're at this level, your needs are being compromised because of an incident. And then what ends up happening is that your needs, if, if that was dealt with in, uh, effect, effectively, little thing, you're back up to where you need to be met again. It's absolutely fine. And I would have been happy back up to the minimum. Minimum. Right. Um, um, but the thing is, is that if the needs have been impacted and then how it's handled compromises your needs further, there's more required to rebuild that relationship and get back to where you were at that baseline before the initial incident happened. And that's what we're talking about here is that is that when you understand which needs have been impacted and which needs are being sought to be met in that moment, it's actually very easy to deal with these situations in ways that don't cost you anything because actually all somebody may, may want to may want is to be heard and to be acknowledged and to say and to say oh we're going to do something to try and stop this from happening again and if it does happen again we're here we'll deal with it um uh, don't worry you're not gonna have to deal with the scary scorpion by yourself we've mm -hmm. we've got that like because that's part of us maintaining the environment that you're, you're that you're in that you would expect within a context of this kind of a situation I have another example too, which is a little bit uh, simpler in explanation. Mm -hmm. And I think this is something that a lot of people can relate to. And it was a customer service situation at a restaurant. Um, we went to a restaurant with some friends and um, my husband and I do not eat meat. We um, do eat fish. However, for a while we were vegan. And Most, we, mostly. Most, yeah. 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 <laughs> we, we won't get into my guilty pleasure. Um, so... We went to this restaurant with some friends and we ordered three tofu tacos, I think. Mm -hmm. And, or no, we ordered two vegan dishes, tofu tacos, and then somebody else ordered a fish dish, I believe. Okay. And my dish was good, which is, I, my husband and I ordered the vegan dishes, which 
you know, that's what we wanted to eat. And then our friend happened to order the tofu because that's what he wanted. He's not vegan, but that was what he ordered. Mm -hmm. And we're talking and we're eating. And then all of a sudden he's like, and he's like halfway through the meal at this point. Yeah, right? he's halfway through the meal. And mm -hmm. like I said, I mean, we haven't seen each other for a while and it's a catch up. So we're really into like, to, you know, being there present with each other. So we're just kind of eating because we're hungry as, you know, yeah. The side act. You're not focusing on the food. You're focusing right. on each other and eating as you're yes. doing it, right? So he yeah. gets about halfway through and he's like, this tastes funny. And then he looks down and he's like, this doesn't look like tofu. And Is this fish? It, yeah. yeah. And then he looks and he goes, is this fish? And we're like, yeah, that's fish. And mm -hmm. so we're kind of poking at it. And we're like, yeah, that's definitely fish. And so we call the waitress over thinking, okay, like the, this is an easy, like. It's an easy fix. It's a super easy fix in many ways. There are many, yes. many options that would have made this an easy fix. Mm -hmm. Now what happened is we called the waitress over and she was like, oh, well, you ate half of it. So it can't be that bad. And it was like, but I ordered the tofu and somebody spoke up and was like, well, at least he's not vegan. So that comment undermined, undermined the complaint, which mm -hmm. wasn't a complaint. It was like, I ordered this. You served me something totally different. Mm -hmm. So the waitress actually attached that. And she's like, yeah, well, you're not, it, you know, it's not going to kill you. Like, you're not vegan. And we're all just like, are you... Okay. There mm -hmm. was no offer of can I get you something different. It no was, apology for nope. the fact that they got you they they given the wrong dish in the first place. Yeah, I don't think there was ever even a like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry that happened. It was like, oh well, you ate half of it, so it's obviously not that big of a deal. And the interesting thing is, uh, and we'll get on to um, why this this particular incident was quite scary for me. Um, I have food allergies. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, the the funny thing is, is that in her mind, the fact that half of it had been eaten was actually the justification that it wasn't that bad. In my world, the fact that it had been half eaten before I realized about something that was contained in it that I'd specifically asked not to have because I have a like severe food allergy, that could have been life and death for me. That would have been the problem. And as somebody who also is a vegan myself, um, having ordered um, tofu tacos, and part of the thing is, is that some of the way that tofu is treated, it's treated in such a way it's not obvious mm -hmm. that it's not fish or meat or whatever it is um and so the fact that it had been half eaten for me would have been more of an issue rather than a reason to say oh hold on this isn't an issue obviously because you've already eaten half of it and we kind of left it at that point mm -hmm. because we realized there wasn't a resolution or it was that, it was gonna it was it, was it would be resolved. not an easy way yes. it wasn't gonna resolve easily yeah right and not in that very moment so um he didn't he didn't even though he had eaten the fish, you know, half of them, once he realized it wasn't what he ordered, I mean, it kind of ruined the meal for him. It was like, oh. oh. Mm -hmm. And wasn't then how it was yeah. how it was handled kind of left even a worse taste in his mouth. Right. And he's like, yeah, no, like, I'm, I'm really over this. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. Normally, you'd get the offer of, can we get you something different? We're mm -hmm. so sorry. Yeah. No. Okay, let's wait for the bill. Or... Yeah. Normally you'd actually be offered up front. Like, can, could I get you a, can I get you a replacement mm -hmm. for that? Or would you like, just like me to, um, to take it off the check for you? Like, because obviously if you've ordered something, but they've been, del you've delivered something else, that's not what you've, you've not fulfilled the, the quote unquote contract. Mm -hmm. That's part of that business customer relationship. The expectation is I ordered this thing and you bring me the thing that you gave me. Um, so normally you'd be offered those two things. Neither was offered. So you thought you'd just see what happened, right? When right. the check arrived. Yes. And it was on the check. And so my friend was like, yeah, no, I'm not okay with this. And it's like, no, that's just like, yeah, you can, say, okay. so, you can yeah. say something okay about to that. Say something about that. And so we did. And they're like, well, you ate half of it. And then they brought the owner into the conversation and she was defending the waitress. And like, she was like, well, what do you want me to do? I was like, can we get it removed from the bill? And she, no. Okay. We'll give you the locals discount. Well, we're locals. We get that discount anyway. anyway yeah. So thanks. I haven't been back. And mm. it's sad because it was a restaurant that I enjoyed, but I can't. 
I don't have the faith in that business. And I don't want to give, there's so many great businesses and so many great restaurants that give amazing customer service. I'm going to go there so that when I go, I'm getting a full experience. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I'm sure it will settle down a little bit in my mind and, you know, I'll return there. But it really did leave a bad taste in all of our mouths. Well, and I I know someone, uh, I knew someone who used to be a restaurateur and he always used to say, you're only as good as your last meal. Mm-hmm. because he, like in the restaurant business um and, it, and yes it can be slightly different if you're regulars for years and years and years and you had one bad meal maybe right. they would give you a second chance but most people if you have a bad meal somewhere they're going to look at because there's so many other options mm-hmm. they're going to look to go elsewhere yeah. claire's like do you want to go here i'm like because mm. eh. yeah. i still because it was never it was never rectified it was never there was never a proper apology so it was never even addressed let alone amends made right like and if you look at it in a, from the apology steps and it until like I'm like no I should really just go through and kind of clear that for myself and give myself that apology to maybe give them a chance and I did it in the immediate moment to curb my initial reaction a couple of years ago would have yeah. I would have just you met gone your off. needs as it was happening as it was happening but I you know I'm kind of glad we're talking about this because I need to go back through and be like all right let's let's get that out so at least I'm not every time I hear that place I'm like mm, or I want to say something negative about them well and and there and there may be other ways that you want to that 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 you need to feel that your needs are being met because especially knowing that it is a place that caters to vegans Mm -hmm. and knowing that you are predominantly vegan knowing that i'm vegan knowing that i have a nut allergy it may be that actually what you want to do and i'm not saying this is what you want to do but it may be that actually you feel that you need to do something to avoid that happening to somebody else where Mm -hmm. maybe you want to leave a review and say this was our experience it's a shame because we really like the place and we'd like but we really feel that it would be beneficial if they learned how to do better customer service in those situations mistakes happen Mm -hmm. but if it had been handled better we would have felt like um we were still being valued as customers and what we needed was um mattered to the the people who owned the restaurant so that's another way and like there there are lots of different ways of of meeting the needs that come that get impacted and sometimes it's putting boundaries down and sometimes it's giving reviews and giving feedback and sometimes it's not doing those things and it's actually just saying "Uh, i just need to process this there's lots of different ways depending which needs are up which needs have been affected and um, and how you're kind of traveling through processing that experience. Um, I want to, because we've just done a couple of negative examples, I want to kind of give a positive example. Mm-hmm. And ironically enough, this example comes from the um, same time and same hotel as the Scorpion incident. Yeah. And um, this was my first real, like, wow, this is how customer service is done. And it was in relation to one person, which was the concierge. We went to, I mean, um, for people who don't know what the concierge um, do, especially in Key West, these are the people who are kind of the um, connection between the tourists and what's going on in the island. They know all of the activities, the restaurants, they make recommendations. And It can be something that can be very personalized or somebody can give, you know, like, oh, these are the things. Mm -hmm. And this concierge was so good. And when she met the needs that I had and I expected when I sat down at that desk and then she went above and beyond with the simplest things. Mm -hmm. What kind of experience are you looking for? Wait. I have a choice. It's not just, you know, what you Here are want. the things you do on the island. Yeah. Right. And a lot of a lot of times, and I've been in situations as a concierge, as, you know, on the other side where it is kind of just, nope, it's this, 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 and this. Mm-hmm. And she took the time to find out who we were and ask simple questions. It didn't take more than an extra five minutes out yeah. of her day mm-hmm. to just touch on these little points that was like, oh, I didn't even know that was a need that I had that I right. wanted to be met. Like, and it felt so much better. And it actually inspired me to co- become a concierge when I came here. I was like, I want to do what she did. I want to make the experience that much better that somebody falls in love with this place. And it was just those simple little touches, e- little easy touches yeah. that made the difference that actually put me here today because without her I wouldn't have enjoyed the island the way that I did that first time I came down with Joe he wouldn't have enjoyed the island either or not as much and we literally wouldn't be here because we met on this island so and she when I came down like 
it was really like, yes, I'm going to, I want to do this and I want to get down there and I want to be a concierge Mm because I want people to have that same experience. I want them to fall in love. So it was, it it actually inspired me. Her customer service was inspiring for my life. Like it changed my life. Absolutely. That's pretty cool. Right. Absolutely. So um, I also have a couple of examples um, uh, and I know we're kind of, um, we may be getting a little short on time now, so I'll try and get through these as quickly as possible. Um, But I had one uh, experience very recently. Uh, As I said, I am vegan, but I also have a number of very severe food allergies, including an allergy to uh, all nuts uh, and also eggplant, weirdly. Um, I'm not really sure what that bit's about. Um, Makes it really hard to cook for her sometimes. It does. does. (laughs) I can be a little bit of a challenge, but I'm worth it. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. So um, uh, I was, um, I've been taken up to Miami for a couple of days to celebrate my birthday. And uh, we found this um, uh, vegan restaurant in Wynwood. It was a vegan cafe. And I, actually it was one that you and I had seen when we'd been up in Miami. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I need to remember this place. And ironically, I'd forgotten about the place until I got there. I was like, oh, it's the place that I saw with Serena. Um, and um, it was a fully vegan um, cafe. Um, we went in and it was one of these places where you go and order at a counter rather than a uh, waitress service. And then they give you a little number and they bring your things over to you when, when, when they're ready. So, um, so while we're at the counter, uh, the person I was there with and I, we're, we're obviously discussing what the options are because we, we like to share food so that we get to try even more options while we're somebody somewhere new. And um, we were discussing about the fact that I had a nut allergy. And so the, the lady behind the counter hears this and she's giving advice on the items that we can have and can't have. And actually it was a great restaurant in a lot of ways, or I thought it was a great restaurant because it had indicated underneath each of the dishes which contained nuts and which didn't. So I'm like, oh, this is great. They get this. Um, that I'm, we're going to choose obviously the ones that don't contain nuts. And I've also spoken to the lady who was serving us and she, um, she knew that I had a nut allergy. <laughs> so, um, we, um, went and sat down, we got bored our meals and actually when one of them came over, um, uh, there was this um, crumble stuff on top of it. And I started to uh, eat some of the, the bits and pieces and I got a couple of mouthfuls in and I'm like, hold on a second. It like when I have, when I um, uh, eat, uh, nuts it causes I get an anaphylactic reaction which means that the uh, my throat and my tongue swell up uh, and what it normally does is it starts with like a tingling in my mouth and my lips um, and I get a little bit itchy and like when that happens that's normally because things are starting to swell uh, and I started I'm like hold on a second so we call over the waitress and we say can you just confirm are there nuts in this and so she goes off to the kitchen to check she comes back and she's like oh yes it's got pecans uh, uh, sprinkled over the top of it Um, but that was kind of the end of the conversation. I'm like, and I'm like, oh shit. So I'm like desperately like downing, uh, antihistamines in my bag. And I'm, and I'm also, um, at that point in time, I, I tried to drink a lot of chilled water because it, um, helps with the inflammation a little bit. Um, and with these reactions, it can go one of two ways. Like sometimes I can be like immediate ambulance, emergency room, things are really serious. Um, and sometimes if I've caught it early enough and I've not had too much of the item in question um sometimes I can manage it myself but it's a very uncomfortable experience either way and I normally end up with like a severe stomach ache at the end of it um it's not pleasant whatever it is um so this person disappeared back in and I'm like is is that it like so here's a restaurant that knows I'm allergic to nuts that I've specifically ordered something that doesn't contain nuts and I've communicated to them this fact and they have served something that they have put nuts onto. It wasn't a cross-contamination thing. Like as somebody who has a food allergy and who's vegan, I make a choice. If I go into somewhere that uses nuts in the kitchen, I know that often these spaces are small and it's not possible to have separate areas. I make a choice as to whether um, I'm concerned about cross-contamination or not. And I've very rarely had any issues with cross-contamination. It's nor uh, it's normally been ingredients put into something. Um, and so um, the person I was with went inside to try and get me some chilled water. And, uh, and I said, could, could you ask me, the, the, the server didn't seem to get what was going on or how severe it was or how to deal with the situation. So I said to the um, person I was with, I was like, would you mind um, seeing if there's a manager that I can speak to? Because I want to make sure this gets dealt with. Because um, for those of you who don't know, a nut allergy literally can be life and death. Like a couple of mouthfuls or a mouthful of something could kill somebody. So I wanted to make sure that they knew what had happened and that they understood this so that they could put things in place to ensure this didn't happen to somebody else. Because 
I, I, as it turned out, I was lucky. I didn't have too severe a reaction. It still spoiled the day for my birthday celebration somewhat. Um, but um, I wasn't going to die, basically, which is yay. Uh, <laughs> we like that. Give it, given, given the options available at that time, I'll take it. Um, but I wanted to make sure that they were going to do something about it. And the, the manager came out and uh, her energy was just very, um, very passive. And she was like, oh, I, I'm really sorry about that. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text everybody in our group chat and, um, and let them know. Um, but it, the, it didn't have this kind of sense of the urgency and the gravity of what had happened and how she was speaking to me and how she was dealing with me. I wasn't sure that I didn't feel reassured especially with something this severe where it literally can be life and death for somebody that it was really going to be handled to ensure that didn't happen to somebody else. So I said, would it be possible? She said, I can get my, my, um, uh, general manager to contact you. So she took my contact information. Um, and I had, uh, I got an email from the, um, general manager and the general manager emailed me and the response was, not good customer service. It wasn't even basic customer service, I would say. I would say it was bad customer service. Um, they very much focused on, uh, well, because we have nuts in our kitchen, cross-contamination can happen. And my point was that this wasn't cross-contamination. This wasn't an accident. This was somebody who had intentionally put nuts onto this dish, which if you're going to do that, that's fine, but then don't do that on a dish that it says it's not free and also don't do that when the customer has indicated that they have a nut allergy um and because they were focused on cross-contamination I'm like I don't think they're getting this and I don't think they're realizing what needs to happen to ensure this doesn't happen again so I then contacted the owner of the company because I this is what we do like we train on customer experience we help understand how to understand your customers needs how to meet them and I really and they are they're an independent business um in Miami people are struggling businesses are struggling right now and I'm like I wanted to help them I wanted to see whether I could help them to understand what had gone wrong here and how to address the situation so I actually sent them uh, an article that I'd written, um, one of the things I, I do is um, I write for entrepreneur.com um, is one of the, the things that uh, I do as part of offering this content. Um, and um, often we will sh uh, I will share about that, about my experiences of um, being an HR consultant and helping um, businesses understand how to uh, improve the experience for their uh, employees or for their guests or for their customers um, or for whoever is involved, how to like management, leadership, all that sort of stuff. Um, and so I sent, I'd, I'd written an article about this because I was like, actually, this is something that a lot of people could benefit from hearing from. And I sent the article to them, which basically stepped through when you have this situation, here are the steps that you need to follow in order to rectify it. And then I got a further email back and the email was written and it was, I mean, I actually broke down. I've actually expanded the article. Um, it, it's not live yet. I will be putting it live. Um, and uh, if I've put it live before this goes out, I will share a link in the show notes. Um, but the um, the article, the, the email I got back, right, I actually broke down what percentage of the email I got back was about them. What a percentage of the email was about me. <laughs> very much mm -hmm. um and what percentage of the email was actually responding to that like actually doing the things that I said here's how to deal with this situation it wasn't a criticism of like you should have done this better this is like here's how to do it I'm offering you free guidance on how to improve your business and how to improve your customer experience um and even when handed the step by step they still were like oh I, I can you can you tell us what what more you want from us? And I responded saying, I'm, I'm just disappointed because I've literally provided you with a step-by-step. -step. This is training that I charge businesses for on how to do this. And I've offered it to you for free so that you cannot do this same thing to another person. And so you can actually address the situation effectively with me. And even when handing you the step-by-step, it still wasn't done. And I mean, it got to the point where I was like, actually, you know, what? I'm not going to waste my energy on this anymore. Um, and I will be putting reviews um, uh, for the cafe online to, to warn people and say, look, if you have a nut, and they said that they should have, that, that um, they normally advise people with a nut allergy not to eat there, but that the server in question obviously didn't know this. Well, again, that's a training issue. That's a responsibility of the organization. That's not, that, 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 
how are you going to avoid this from happening in the future? I mean, there's, there's so many things in the standard apology that got missed in this. Um, and I will put reviews in place because I do think that when it is life and death, when it is that severe, and the thing that was ridiculous for me was that, uh, I mean, they missed the first step of the, um, the apology, like act to avoid further, act to avert further harm. Nobody asked me whether I needed medical attention. Nobody asked if I needed an ambulance. Nobody asked me whether I needed to know where the nearest um, doctor's surgery or pharmacy was. Um, it was just a clear misunderstanding of just how severe and serious the situation was and what was needed in, this, in that situation to be able to address it. Now, because of the work I do, um, I think, oh, Karen, I really, I genuinely wanted to help this company, but you can't help somebody who doesn't want to help themselves and who won't listen to the guidance and advice that's being offered. So that's part of the reason we're doing this today is that we want to help businesses to do better, especially in the current climate. People are struggling especially with the labor crisis, the great resignation that we're experiencing right now. But even without those things, it's tough for small businesses. We want to make it easier for them and we want to help you to understand how to give better customer service. Um, so there's another uh, example I had with a clothing company. Um, I'll kind of whiz through this one quite quickly. Um, I was given a... Um, a um, an off-the-shoulder shirt, she says, wearing an off-the-shoulder <laughs> shirt. Like, it's a, it's my style. It's something I like. Um, and a friend of mine bought me one for my birthday. And the first time I washed it, I followed their instructions and the color ran and it ran into the... There was a... Um, a um some text on the front of it i think it said hug dealer um which was kind of ironic because it was sent to me it was provided to me as a gift during the pandemic when hugs you weren't allowed to <laughs> it was like illegal to hug people so it was kind of funny it was kind of ironic and i loved it and look it at was, you bad girl yeah i know right <laughs> and so i was like I, I thought it was kind of fun um and so i was disappointed when the color ran because it meant that you couldn't read the words as well so i contacted the company and found out what was um and explained the situation and they said that the original um, uh, item had been bought um, in the sale on my birthday is just before Christmas. So quite often there's like a, a festive or holiday sale before um, around that time. And she bought um, this um, sweater for me in the sale. And so um, they offered me the, um, it was no longer in the sale, basically when I, uh, I responded, when I sent this message through. And so they said they would give me the original value of the sweater. So basically I could get an equivalent. Um, so she, they, they sent me the information. Um, and so I ordered another, um, I think I ordered another three sweaters. So I, I, uh, I got the, the, the return basically on the one that um, uh, I had been uh, damaged I actually bought another one above and beyond that and I bought another um thinner one um and it was one of these stores that the 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 sizes ran tiny I was in an extra large sweater and I'm not generally speaking an extra large I'm normally about a medium so I got an extra large in the things that I'd ordered because I assumed that everything just ran um uh, small um so the um the two of the items that uh, arrived, one had a printing error on it. And then the the other, the slightly different top was massive. I mean, it was like a tent on me. I'm like, oh, this is not, <laughs> this is not what I ordered uh, or not what I thought I was ordering. Um, so I went back to them and um, they said that I could, because I was having so many issues with them, they said I could keep the, the, um, the two um, items. But obviously one of these items had been a return that it, it, I'd used it. I, actually, I think it was only just two items I bought, um, mm -hmm. two extras that I got. I got the one to replace the the one with the uh, had the writing um, on it, and the other one was just an extra top that I liked from them. So I spent extra money with them, and so um, that one had a printing error, one had a sizing error, um, and I was at the point where we were locked down in the UK, and I wasn't going to be able to get to a post office to return the item to them because one they were all closed and two we weren't allowed out so um i went back to them i was like one's got a printing area one's too big i can't get it returned like, i was just going to return and get a refund from them and they said you know what just um uh, keep keep that one because there's nothing you can do about returning it to us right now uh, the one with the printing error um i can't remember how it worked oh they were going to give me a refund for it um but the interesting thing was they gave me the refund for like the original discounted rate. So I was like, hold on a second. The reason I got this was because there was something wrong with the first one. And you gave me the full price because that's what I'd been bought. It was a gift. And now you're, so even after they resolve the quote unquote resolve the situation, they did it by actually taking something away that they'd already given me for an error they'd already made. So it was just this really bizarre situation. I'm like, 
and it was like five pounds. It wasn't anything significant. I'm like, this is kind of strange. Like, why would you rectify one issue by unrectifying the previous <laughs> issue? Kind of weird. So th- there are there are, th- and this happens a lot with people. There's lots of uh, issues where um, things things kind of don't work the way that we expect them to or, or want them to. Um, but I have had some amazing experiences of extraordinary customer service. Uh, I went to, uh, and I'll, I'll just t- share one of these because. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on. There are so many examples I could give of this. But there was one, uh, I went to a hair salon when I was in my um, mid-teens and um, I got a perm. It was ill-advised on so many levels. But I think a lot of us went through that phase at some point or another. Um, so, um, but I have very, very straight hair. If you can't see on, like, if you can see on the video, like, my hair is very straight. It's actually less straight than it used to be. Um, so, I mean, my used, hair used to be poker straight. And I, I got this perm and it fell out within two weeks. Like my hair was dead straight again within two weeks. Um, so I went back and I was like, hey, I thought this was meant to last a little longer than two weeks. And they're like, oh, we'll redo it for you. It's fine. Um, so they put me with a junior stylist. Um, again, no issue with that. I had no issue. Um, and what ended up happening was um, they wound the rollers too tight. And I ha- my hair broke off, basically. I had sections of hair that were literally like a couple. Of- I had- my hair was down to my shoulders and it was like a couple of inches. Um, and I was kind of mortified. So I went back to the um, uh, to the, uh, the salon and I was speaking to the lady behind the desk. And as it turned out, the owner happened to be right there while I was having this conversation. And... I explained what had happened and he, I remember he came round from the back of the reception desk and he held my hands uh, and he's like, he said, I am so, so sorry that this happened to you. Would you please give me the opportunity? He said, I understand if you don't want to come back here again. He's like, would you please give me the opportunity to rectify this and make it right? And be- he got it. Like immediately he understood. I was a teenage girl, obviously my hair was kind of a big thing at that point in time and I didn't want it to be damaged. Um, and because he got it, it meant that I trusted him because he was like, I'm so sorry. It must have been when a junior stylist. They must have wound the rollers too tight. I will make sure that we go back and we retrain them so they understand. Again, avoid it happening again in the future. Um, but actually, it was how he handled me because I was really upset. Uh, and he was like, Let, would, you, would you allow me to make this right for you? And for the price of that one perm, I had two perms because I had the, the second one. The second one also fell out very quickly. Um, so, but it, it, but when a perm falls out, it doesn't go back to being kind of dead straight. It kind of this weird, wink, wonky, wavy thing was happening. But it wasn't a perm, but it wasn't straight. It was something weird in the middle. So they actually gave me a straightening as well to kind of get me back to where I was. I had a couple of colors I I mean I can't tell you how many cut and blow dries I must have had in there for free like every time I walked in the owner treated me like I was like his VIP customer oh my goodness it's so good to see you come and sit down he always gave me a discount no matter what was going on I mean I go in for a cut and blow dry with uh, one of my girlfriends and she would get a wash and blow dry just for being in there with me. Um, and um, and, it, and obviously there were junior stylists who had to practice and things. So it worked for them as well. It wasn't like, it, and this was the thing, it wasn't something that was done at my benefit to their cost. Mm-hmm. It was, they found the win-win. They found something that worked for them. And not only was it win-win because I kept going back there and I kept using my business, I recommended them to people. And my sister actually had her wedding hair done there. And everybody in the wedding party had their hair done there. So all the bridesmaids, the, um, the mother of the bride, I think the mother of, I don't know whether the mother of the groom did because I'm not sure whether she was in town for that, but certainly there were other members of the party. There were lots of people who had hair done for my sister's wedding there. And so the interesting thing is, if you go back to the, the apology steps that we, sp- that we speak about in episode uh, 16, I think it is. Um, I, think, yeah, I think it's episode 16. Um, when you go back and look at those apology steps, they went through every single one of them. Avoid to avert, avert further harm. There was no further harm being done in that moment when I went and spoke to them. But they addressed it. They made amends. They uh, they checked in They they to see um, whether how I was doing. They went above and beyond and above and beyond and above and beyond. And until the point where that guy retired, um, who was the owner of the place, 
I would travel from, I used to live in London. I would travel like an hour and a half. I mean, yes, I was seeing family as well. It wasn't just to get my hair done, but I would get my hair done while I was back at home rather than going to a local salon. So he got a lot of business out of me. So it it was a win-win for all sides. And that's the thing is that good customer service, if done well, works for everybody. It doesn't come at anyone's detriment. Um, And that's that's really what we want to kind of get across here is that it's actually very relatively easy if you understand what the needs are, how to meet them, what needs are, are the uh, are within the expectations of the, the the context of the transaction? What needs are the above and beyond? How do you put strategies in place to meet those? And how do you put in place the strategies so that when incidents happen that compromise needs, they can be rectified in ways that provide an opportunity to create an amazing customer relationship, which is exactly what happened with the hair salon. I think you actually mentioned it a little bit earlier on, but I think it's good to mention it again here. Kind of, you know, sometimes we focus more on the personal and our experience of stuff, but in the episode um, relating to... you share what you're going to say, and I'll... Yeah, I just forgot what the the episode... Of what episode, like what I was actually... Um, oh, how screw-ups can bring us closer together. Absolutely. The same thing is true in a customer service relationship. I can't tell you how many places I am that I'm a loyal customer, that I travel to, mm-hmm. that like I'll wait until I'm in a different part of the country to go utilize these services because of a screw-up that was then handled so well that mm-hmm. I'm like, yes, like because that met my meets my security need to know if something goes wrong... I it's know, it's going to be, to be okay. And by the way, that was episode 14. Thank you. You're, you're, you're good with welcome. the numbers. I'm, I'm good with, <laughs> mainly because I have them up on my screen in front of me. I'm not good at remembering them, but I like to make sure that if, if people want to go back and listen to a specific episode, we, should, we, we make sure they know where to go. Because we want to provide good customer service. We try. <laughs> and see, even when I'm spacey, somebody's here to... Yeah, we, 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 we were a good team on that, in that respect. Absolutely. Yes. Um, it's... Really important to remember that people often focus on the big things with customer service. They're Uh focused on the major disasters or the incredible wins. Yeah. But in actual fact, it's the small things that can make the biggest difference. Absolutely. And it's it's the um it's it was it's all the small things. And if you have lots and lots of small things, um it's it, it can create a much better experience than this one and done. Oh, we did this big thing once and it was great. But actually, if we do things consistently over a period of time where we do lots of little small things, each one of those gets that, oh, that felt good. Oh, that felt good. Like each one of them gets felt, yeah, it might feel really good in that one moment. But all of those little moments kind of build up and compound over time. I think that's probably it for today. We've we've shared a lot. I mean, we've got and we've got stories for days about this. I'm sure we will get back to this on, on other podcast episodes. Anything you want to jump in with before we finish up? No, I'm good with this one. Okay, me too. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We will be back next time with the second episode in our um in our business series, um, which is about Um, good customer service how to get it so we've looked at how to give it this time what is it that you need to know about needs in order to get good customer service we're going to dive into that in our next episode Um, so thank you for being with us thank you for watching Uh, we're sending you lots of love remember to stay safe and between now and next time remember to keep meeting your needs lots of love bye everybody that's it for today if you like what you heard please subscribe rate and give us a written review as it will help more people find us And remember, customer service, no matter who it's for, is nothing more than meeting their needs. Well, shit. It really is that simple.